in color, the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Peyton Place is brought to you by... Today, the Peyton County Courthouse is a magnet, drawing to its matter-of-fact corridors and rooms an extraordinary variety of people. Martin Peyton and Hannah Cord arriving together. Peyton to remind her of her obligations. Mrs. Cord to testify as to her knowledge of the death of Ann Howard. Elsewhere in the courthouse, young Rachel Wells has been placed on a different sort of witness stand by the man who calls himself her uncle. Jack Chandler. I'm never coming back with you ever. And if you try and make me, I'll tell them. I'll give them the truth straight. You tell them what? I found that bracelet on the floor of your car. A lion. You know I'm not. I bet they could make you tell a lot about Miss Allison McKenzie if they knew that. So you stay away from me. Don't come near me or I'll tell them. You tell money. You tell them that and I'll get you. You and your friend with the white jacket. And no police are gonna stop me. Remember that. I'll get you both. I mean it. Mr. Fowler, would you like to? So you're trembling. Can we go back to the hospital now? Well, what happened in there? He just wanted me to go back to the farm. And that's all? Yes, that's all. Now let's go. Rachel. I don't want to talk about it right now. Richard, listen to me. Well, it's been arranged for one of the officers to take you back to the hospital. Aren't you coming? I can't. I... Officer. Why? Rachel, look, this hearing, it's, uh, it's about the death of... The girl you're going to marry? Municipal Court of Peyton Place now resumes the matter at hand. The Honorable Irwin A. Chester is presiding. You recognize the girl in this photograph? Yes, of course, it's Ann. Let the record indicate that the witness identified a photograph of the deceased Ann Howell as being her own daughter. These two children, Stephen and Anne, did you raise them, Mrs. Cord? One of them. Which one? Stephen. Which one? The boy. What happened to the girl? Well, she went with her father. I gave her to her father to raise, but Stephen... Just answer the questions, please. You gave the girl child away. To her own father. You kept the boy, and you sent the girl away to be raised without a mother. Yes. When and where was the next time you saw Anne? In Peyton Place. Her father took a beach cottage up the coast one summer, and he brought Anne with him. She was about ten. Was there a reunion then? No. Do you recall anything unusual that occurred during the summer involving Anne and someone else? I suppose you mean the bluff. When Christopher Weber... 
when he fell from the bluff? Do you know who it was that was accused of having caused the fall? Yes. Who? Anne? Do you remember who accused Anne of pushing Christopher Weber off the bluff? The children. Did you know any of the children? You were one of them. You allowed a frightened little boy to accuse his own sister of something you knew could possibly stain her life forever? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Strike counsel's lost statement. When was the next time you saw Anne? When she returned to Peyton Place a few months ago. And that was 18 years later? Yes. So from the day she was born until the day she came back, you only saw your daughter once? Once in 28 years? But, Stephen, you don't understand. Mrs. Court, I only want the answers to my questions. But there's so much more you than... You only saw her once in 28 years? Objection, Your Honor. The witness has already answered the question. Mr. Cord. After Anne returned several months ago, did you make any effort to contact her? No. Did you ever contact her at all after she returned? Yes, several times. Did you tell her then that... No, I never told her I was her mother, Stephen. She only knew me as Mrs. Hannah Cord. To your knowledge, did she ever know that I was her brother? Yes, she found that out. Did she contact you after she discovered I was her brother? Yes. When was that? The day she... The day she what, Mrs. Cord? The day she what, Mrs. Cord? The day she hurled herself off Sailor's Bluff because you turned your back and sent her away? Like you did the day she was born? Objection, Your Honor. I know this is a preliminary hearing and the court's inclined to be lenient, but counsel is continually abusing his own witness. If it please, Your Honor, I'll withdraw the question. Mrs. Court, on the day of your daughter's death, did she telephone you to say that she wished to see you? No, she just... she just turned up without any warning. You answered the door? Yes. And there was your daughter? Yes. What did she say? She said that she had to talk to me. Did she give a reason? She said that she had just found out that I, I was her mother. She called you mother? Yes. What did you do? When Anne called you mother, in the 28 years of her life, what did you do? Well, I just... I just waited to see what she'd say next. You just waited to see what she would say next. You didn't touch her? No. You didn't make an effort to reach out to her, take your daughter in your arms? No. You just stood there and waited to see what she would say next. Somehow I got the impression from Mr. Payton's testimony that it was a far more emotional reunion. Well, there are times when it's... And it's very difficult to show one's true feelings. What were your true feelings? And would you describe your daughter's behavior? She seemed confused. Understandably. Don't you agree? Yes, I can understand that she'd have questions. Did you give her the answers? To the best of my ability. Would you clarify that statement? To my own knowledge, your greatest accomplishment involved deception. Your Honor. But I hardly think you'd boast of it in this courtroom. I cannot understand counsel's repeated efforts to discredit his own witness. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You will strike counsel's digression from the record, leaving only his request that the witness clarify her previous statement. I want you to tell me specifically what questions your daughter asked and the exact answers you gave her. She wanted to know why I had allowed her father to raise her. She asked you why she had been given away as a newborn infant. Yes. And what did you say? Well, I told her that when Brian... when her father and I decided on a divorce, it... it seemed to be the only practical solution. The only practical solution to what, Mrs. Corrin? Well, to raising the children. You felt that the only practical solution to raising the children would be to give one to each parent and to conceal the identity of the other parent and their own identity as brother and sister? And did your daughter accept this answer, that this was the only practical solution? She seemed to. Without further explanation? Yes. Well, I... I did explain to her that there are some divorces that are... that are less 
friendly than others. Was yours one of these? Yes. Did she ask why there was bitterness between you and her father? No. Not one question. Not even a simple why. No. You're stating that Anne showed no curiosity about something that twisted her entire life? I know that I would have had questions, and I would have demanded answers and gotten them. Objection, Your Honor. I don't see that counsel's personal speculations have anything to do with the defense of his client. Sustain. Proceed, Mr. Cord, and consider yourself appropriately warned. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Cord, you testify that Anne came to the Peyton House specifically to ask questions. And you answered them to the best of your ability. And yet now you tell me, under oath, that this one crucial question remained unasked and unanswered. Stephen, there are answers that can't be given without hurting people you love. You told that to the daughter you denied? That you wanted to spare her out of love? Not in those words. Well, then what words did you use? How did you justify what you've done? I didn't. I couldn't. But what reason did you give? None. Was there any excuse? I didn't have any. Did Anne cry? No. Did you cry? No. But in the words of your employer, Mr. Payton, eyes were red, handkerchiefs were wet. What did Anne say when she left? I don't remember. You don't remember the last word your daughter said to you? Well, it was just some remark, the sort of thing you say at a time like that. What do you say? Goodbye forever, mother? Was that what sent you after her? No. But you did go to her boarding house late that afternoon? Yes, I did. The afternoon of her death? Yes. And did you find her there? No. The mischief had been done. Oh, Stephen. It couldn't be undone. It was too late. Too late for you, too late for the daughter you never saw alive again. But I did see her. You saw Anne? Yes. Was it after you failed to find her at the boarding house? Yes. Where did that second meeting take place? Her landlady told me she thought she might have gone out to Dr. Rossi's beach cottage. And that's where you found her? She wasn't in the cottage. She was on the bluff. Stephen. Stephen, please, could I just have a moment to myself before we go on? Your Honor. Very well. Court will recess for one hour. <laughs> Thanks. 